Remember that teen who says Warren football coach Jeff Robbins kicked him? Turns out he has a fractured leg. We have the details from the medical record straight ahead. We have an update on the impeachment, what lawmakers are discussing today on the eve of this historic House vote. I'm Camila Bernal in Washington. Healthcare, one of the most important issues for Democrats. But presidential candidates divided on the issue and having to explain themselves over and over again. We'll talk about it coming up. Something old is new again. If an instant camera is on your shopping list coming up, we'll have your holiday help. And get ready for a freeze tonight. I'm Adam Kasky here in the Weather Center. I'll break it down all across South Texas for what you can expect, not just tonight, but for the rest of the week. Coming right up. For more than five years, the fire union and the city have been without an agreement. Today, an agreement put in the hands of arbitrators when they're expected to make a decision. The news at five starts right now. And first at five, a big update in the case of a San Antonio high school football coach accused of kicking one of his players. Medical records show that teenager has a fractured leg. Dylan Conyol joins us now live with more on the long term outlook for the student and the coach. That's right, yeah. Ursula and Steve Warren football coach Jeff Robbins has now been on leave for eight weeks as several agencies look into the late October incident on campus. A source familiar with the investigation says Robbins kicked a player in the back of his knee, causing it to buckle. An MRI of the knee taken two days later revealed a stress fracture in the medial tibial plateau, which is the upper part of the shin bone. Medical records viewed by the defenders show it could take the 16 year old six to nine months to recover and that doctors are hopeful the injury will heal without the knee having to be surgically repaired. Several agencies, including Child Protective Services and Northside ISD police, continue to investigate Robbins. NISD spokesman Barry Perez declined an interview request but told us via email today the investigation into this matter is ongoing. As such, it would not be appropriate for me to comment. I can confirm, however, that the employee remains on administrative leave pending completion of this multi-agency investigation. Records show the case is being investigated as a possible felony assault involving a public servant. Dylan Collier, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Dylan. New at five, you're getting a first look at the moment the Bear County Sheriff's deputies pulled a man out from under a bridge after he escaped an arrest this afternoon and assaulted a deputy along the way. The sheriff's office said it all unfolded while the 39 year old Joseph Garcia was reporting for probation. They say he had a felony warrant that was active for his arrest. As soon as deputies arrived, Garcia started to make a run for it. He ended up punching one deputy twice before eventually taking off. Garcia was chased all the way from the jail to Buena Vista and Colorado streets. That is where a BCSO canine helped to find him hiding inside a tunnel under the bridge. Sheriff Javier Salazar thanking his team for quick action in getting Garcia, who has a long criminal history, back into custody. Very long history, documented member of the Mexican Mafia. He's definitely a dangerous person, uh, not somebody that we want to uh, take any chances with. Uh, but as I mentioned, the officers the, did a great job working together to get him back in custody safely. As you heard the sheriff say, a documented member of the Mexican Mafia, Garcia now facing a charge of aggravated assault on a peace officer and evading arrest, in addition to the original charge of felon in possession of a firearm. We have some new details into a deadly plane crash happening near San Antonio International Airport earlier this month. You might remember it. The National Transportation Safety Board releasing the crash report today. The report says on December 1st, the plane experienced engine failure on its way from Sugarland to Bernie. The pilot, 38 year old Robert Womble, declared an emergency and was cleared to land at SA International. But the plane spiraled down, crash landing on West Rhapsody Drive just northwest of the airport. Womble and two other passengers, 77 year old Maureen McFerrin Garo and 22 year old Eric Naranjo, all died. No other injuries were reported from that landing. The search continues for a man who robbed a Northside convenience store overnight. According to police, it happened around 2 this morning at the Circle K on Blanco and Sir Winston Street. A man wearing a black robe and sunglasses pointed a gun at the clerk and demanded money. He ran off with cash from the register and the register tray itself. The suspect, when found, faces a charge of aggravated robbery of a business. 
The latest on the negotiations between the city of San Antonio and the fire union. After more than five years without a contract, both sides have now rested their cases and arbitrators are taking over. The final decision expected to be made by mid-January. The last agreement expired in 2020, rather 2014. During renegotiation, the city asked the police and fire unions to have officers and firefighters start contributing to their monthly health care premiums. In 2016, the police union reached an agreement with the city, but the fire union did not. Firefighters have been operating under that expired agreement ever since. A memorial service held in honor of the life and legacy of Charlene McCombs, the civic leader and former Spurs owner, died at home Thursday at the age of 91. Today's service held at Alamo Heights United Methodist Church at 1 o'clock. Charlene McCombs married to Red McCombs for 69 years. She gave to several causes she believed in, including the performing arts and women's athletics. Right now, Congress is in the midst of a heated debate as the full House prepares to vote on articles of impeachment against President Donald Trump. ABC's Trevor Alt has the latest from Capitol Hill. On the eve of what's slated to be a historic day on Capitol Hill, today the House Rules Committee meeting for hours, expected to hammer out the terms for Wednesday's likely vote on the articles of impeachment against President Trump. It's clear that this president acted in a way that not only violates the public trust, he jeopardized our national security. Democrats largely steadfast on moving forward with impeachment, running into extensive pushback from Republicans. This is a day where we're going to disagree and disagree very strongly. The Democratic-led House anticipated to vote in favor. Top senators are already sparring over the expected Senate trial. Minority Leader Chuck Schumer continuing to call on administration officials to testify, something supported by 71 percent of the American public. What is Leader McConnell afraid of? What is President Trump afraid of? The truth? But the American people want the truth. But Majority Leader Mitch McConnell all but shutting that suggestion down. If House Democrats' case is this deficient, this thin, the answer is not for the judge and jury to cure it over here in the Senate. And Tuesday afternoon, the president weighing in, sending a scathing six-page letter to House Speaker Nancy Pelosi, expressing his strongest and most powerful protest against the impeachment process, accusing Democrats of bringing pain and suffering to our republic, and claiming more due process was afforded to those accused in the Salem witch trials. The impeachment vote appears likely to fall almost entirely along party lines, with right now no Republicans breaking ranks, but even without any Republican support, Report. Wednesday looks to be the third time in history where the House of Representatives could impeach the President of the United States. Trevor Ault, ABC News, Capitol Hill. And now we move to the campaign trail. Elizabeth Warren singing a different tune on health care, and it involves giving voters a choice. Camilla Bernal is in Washington to explain what all this means for the campaign, and specifically Elizabeth Warren. Camilla. Yes, Steve, there is a clear divide on health care among all of the Democratic presidential candidates. They're having to explain themselves over and over again and really calm the fears of those who want to leave things as they are. Elizabeth Warren is using a new word to describe her health care plan. Choice, choice, the choice for everyone to make. It's a notable shift. Warren wants a single payer system or Medicare for all that eventually eliminates private health insurance. I have a plan that shows how we can have Medicare for all without raising taxes one cent on middle class families. Moderates like Joe Biden and Pete Buttigieg criticize the progressive plan. Getting that plan through, even a Democratic Congress, would be difficult. Oh, I'm proposing Medicare for all who want it. Highlighting a clear split among Democrats. How do we actually solve the problem for the American people and do it in a way that, that invites more people in instead of uh, a kind of my way or the highway approach? <laughs> While her speech has changed, Warren says her plan remains the same at the start, giving voters the option to opt in. You don't have to take it but it's available to you if you want it. The choice is yours. According to a new Fox News poll, support for government-run health care like Medicare for All among Democrats has dropped. 
78% want all Americans to be able to buy into the traditional Medicare system. Only 54% want a government-run health care. That's down double digits since October, which may be a reason behind Warren's new rhetoric. I want to get as much help to as many people as quickly as we can, give a lot of them a choice. It could also sway moderate voters who worry getting rid of private health insurance would harm the Democrats' chances against President Trump in November. And health care will likely also come up on this Thursday's debate in Los Angeles. Steve. Camilla Bernal, live in Washington. Thank you. And outside, bright sunshine, but unseasonably cool temperatures out there. And get ready for it to get much colder as we go through tonight. Let's take a look at the readings right now, according to our weather watchers. By and large, we're in the 50s, but there will be some locations very quickly dropping down into the 40s. I mean, Rock Springs and Lakey, both at 50 degrees. Eagle Pass and Talia's backyard at 56. Pan Panna Maria, mid-50s. Already 49 in Bandera and West Kerrville. Even Holotus checking in at 48. So temperatures falling off pretty quickly this evening. Notice by 11 p.m. we'll already be in the mid 30s. Get ready for a freeze tomorrow morning. That's one of our headlines, a morning freeze, and I'll break it down into detail across the region and even Bear County coming up in a few minutes. We will have more sunshine, but it's going to remain cool. Rain chances are actually looking a little bit better. Talk about all of this coming up in a few, Ursula. Thank you, Adam. A major change for the Catholic Church announced by the Vatican today. Pope Francis has lifted Vatican secrecy rules, meaning the church is now allowed to provide authorities more documents in sex abuse cases. This rule has already been in place in many countries, but it has not been a universal rule until now. Victims will also be allowed to stay informed about the outcome of their cases at the Vatican. Privacy rules around reporting sex abuse, though, have not changed. Well, you've heard of skimmer scams, but Visa warning customers about a new way your information might be stolen at the gas pump. The company says cyber crime teams have found a way to hack into gas station networks. Once they're in, they're installing malware on the point of sale systems. Visa says this particular hack is more sophisticated than just card skimmers. If you have a Visa card, the company warns you should keep an eye on your account for fraudulent charges.